Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is Dr. Michael Greger uh, coming to you live from my treadmill, answering any questions you might have about nutrition, just as I do every month, both here on Facebook Live, which I just finished up, and here on YouTube. Um, for those of you unfamiliar with my work, every year I read through every issue of every English language nutrition journal in the world. So, busy folks like you. Don't have to. I think about the most interesting, most groundbreaking, the most practical findings, new videos and articles that I upload every day to my nonprofit site, nutritionfacts.org. Everything on the website is free. There are no ads, no corporate sponsorships, strictly not commercial, not selling anything. Just put it up as a public service, as a labor of love, as a tribute to my grandmother. New videos and articles every day on the latest in evidence-based nutrition. What a concept. All right. All right, the uh, questions are flooding in. I will start at the top and see. Uh, um, oh, Matt J H J H thirty three asks, "What is my take on orthorexia?" Fantastic question. I just did a series. When I say did, meaning I scripted out a series. The videos aren't done yet, but I uh, did all the research, scripted out the videos for uh, three videos on orthorexia. You are going to find them hilarious. Um, it's one of my favorite series, just in terms of uh, adding lots of humor. Um, uh, so I went into uh, this whole orthorex thing very open-minded um, and uh, came away um, questioning the validity of the diagnosis. And it's just really fascinating to see how they, um, how they diagnose people um, with this disorder, which is not really an accepted disorder. Um, uh, but someone, some guy just made it up in some yoga journal. Um, but it's kind of taken off in kind of the mainstream media. And so scientific looked at, actually looked into it. Um, and uh, so they came up with something called the Orto 15, which is kind of this test to see if you have this disease. The questions are so crazy. Like one is uh, when you walk into a grocery store, um, um, how often are you confused? And one question, and then, then there's like a, a light guard scale where it's like always confused um, or sometimes confused or never confused or whatever. Anyway, the, the healthiest answer, the one that says you're least likely to have a, a disease is always confused. I am always confused when I walk into a grocery store. That's supposed to be the normal response. That's crazy. Anyway, it's a fascinating series. I hope you'll check it out. Um, it won't be up for a while uh, now, but it is uh, definitely something that I've been wanting to do videos on in a long time. And I go deep into basically every article that's ever been written on it, and uh, you can make up your own mind. Uh, Niels asks, what's the process behind losing um, uh, What's the process behind losing weight fat slash fat when on calorie deficient calorie deficit instead of ketosis? Do you then always burn fat as fuel or do you burn protein slash muscles? So um, there's this, uh, typically you're only, you're burning kind of one of two fuels. Your preferred fuel in your body is carbohydrate. Um, and so you burn, you know, kind of sugars and starches first. That's what your body would prefer to uh, burn. But if you're not eating anything or you're not eating any carbs, your body then goes um, to uh, burning fat. The problem is, and so you say, well, then that's great. Isn't that what we want? Our bodies burn fat. I mean, so if you eat, you know, carbohydrates, your fat oxidation, your fat burning drops dramatically in the next few hours. Why? Because your body has all these carbohydrates and would rather use those to fuel your muscles. Um, uh, and so he's, well, well, isn't that exactly what we want? We want to burn fat. The problem is ketogenic diets have, guess lots of what fat and so you're all you care about is your fat balance if you're actually taking in more fat than you're burning then you're at it then you're going to add fat to your body um and so it doesn't matter how much fat you're burning if you're eating if you're if more fats are being deposited than being burned um uh but uh um uh, but but i know i've got lots of i've in fact i'm gonna do a whole webinar it's probably end up being four or five hours on fasting and ketogenic diets and intermittent fasting, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'll have a chapter in the new book on it. So stay tuned and I will um, go into all the ketogenic diet stuff, not only for, for weight, but for all sorts of uh, um, uh, disease interventions. 
such as a pediatric epilepsy, etc. Okay. Niels asks, 23 me DNA test showed that predisposed to weigh on to weigh about average. Okay. Been on uh, we actually the 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 so-called polymorphisms, the, the the genetic variety um that we can count for differences in fat is teeny. Um uh, just uh, uh, um I forget something on the order of 10%. Um, so the really like there isn't a fat gene or even a constellation of genes that really kind of determines more. Um, but, um, but anyway, um, been on daily dozen and says really hasn't lost um, fat. Still bent BMI of uh, 25, um, uh, which is kind of borderline overweight. Should I try intermittent fasting? Um, should I try intermittent fasting. So. Um, I'm still working through the fasting work um, and um, finding more benefits and more risks than I had uh, initially come across. And so that's why I want to finish um, looking through it all before I uh, make any kind of pronouncements. Um, but uh, that's what the whole new book is about. And so um, I will go into all the various um, tweaks that are set up to kind of accelerate weight loss. So it's just basically like, you know, blood pressure or cholesterol, people um, doing strictly plant-based diets, the average blood pressure, perfect, about 110 over 65. The average cholesterol, perfect, about 145, 147. Um, uh, and same thing, the average BMI, like 23.7 or something, perfect, right? Um, and so, But look, these are all bell curves. And so some people um, uh, on great diets still, uh, can be on either side of that. And so that's why, you know, on how not to die, I go through, oh, your blood pressure, this is what you do, go on a plant-based diet and that should do it. If not, okay, then there's flax seeds, hibiscus tea, all these other things, all right? Same thing with cholesterol. Okay. That should do it, but if it doesn't, and so that's what this book will be about. Okay. This is what the healthiest diet can do. Um, but if that doesn't work enough for you, here's all the other things that can accelerate weight loss. Um, and so you can uh, um, have a whole menu to uh, choose from. The book should be out in December, either December 2019 or January 2020, depending on how uh, quickly I can uh, go through the manuscript. There's like 80,000 new articles on obesity every year. So every day I write, I'm like, you know, dozens behind. So it's been uh, it's been more difficult than I had expected. Anyway, we're working on it. Okay, after how not uh, Imuna Emina um, asks um, after how not to die. How about and how not to die? How about how not to stress? Ah. Huh. Um, so actually, after how not to die, I'm going to do how not to age. Talk about all the new longevity research. Um, uh, I, I am going to have a chapter on stress management in the obesity book because that can play a role in kind of stress-related eating. Um, so that, yeah, no, so, and I, I am planning to do a mental health book. Um, and so maybe that's where stress, maybe in kind of the talking about anxiety, I'll, I'll uh, do it there. So that's a possibility. Um, but I appreciate your interest. And there are things we can do about diet to affect mental health. I'm always surprised when I find those articles, but I have a whole bunch of videos on nutrition facts about that. Okay. Um, uh, how do, Niels asks, how does water fasting affect the metabolism after you stop fasting? Will you yo-yo back up and above? Um, uh, well, I mean, if, so if you, you know, water fast, drop your weight. No, I mean, no one that proponents of water fasting do not aren't proponents of water fasting for weight loss. Why? Because it's by definition the very it's the very definition of unsustainability. Obviously, right? Um, and so once you go back to your, your regular diet, then you'll get back to your regular weight and your regular disease risk factors. Um, but the hope is that water only fasting can kind of jump, give you a psychological jump start, if nothing else, to radically change your diet. And the hope is that, you know, once you kind of recalibrate your taste buds, I mean, after you're fasting, then anything should taste good, right? But it doesn't have to be Krispy Kreme anymore to give you the same kind of pleasure. I mean, eating, right? Isn't there some saying like hunger is the best sauce or something like that? Anyway, um, 
And so the hope is then you can kind of recalibrate your taste buds and that you can then switch over to healthy diet. Like, so there's been these um, a really exciting water only fasting trials with bringing down blood pressure, remarkably effective bringing down blood pressure. Um, but uh, the, 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 by definition, it's only going to last for a few weeks unless you then use that to change over to a healthy um, diet, whole food plant-based diet. Um, to maintain whatever benefits you got from that the little kickstart you got from the water only fasting. Um, and I would not encourage people to do water only fasting more than a few days without um, a professional supervision. Um, all right, Neil asks, um, can, oh, when is the fasting series going to come out? It is not going to come out before March, which is when the, um, uh, when the manuscript is due. So I have videos buffered out until March, uh, scripted out until March, um, because I had to, because I can't write videos and write a book at the same time. So that's why I had to uh, put my life on hold to do a bevy of videos. And now I can hone in and uh, submerge myself in the obesity research. Um, and then we'll get back to writing videos and fasting will be part of that. Okay. Um, GRC VGC as best food supplements for dissolving kidney stones. There's only one type of stone that you can get rid of just through diet. Um, that's uric acid stones. If you do have a uric acid stone by drinking lots of water, um, and a plant-based diet, you can actually get rid. Um, uh, and particularly with lots of greens, uh, uh, low oxalate, uh, leafy greens, which uh, can alkalize your urine, and you should be able to dissolve that stone away. If, however, it's an oxalate stone or a more common type, then uh, it's not, then it will not dissolve through diet alone. But you, with a healthy enough diet, um, meaning low um, animal foods, low sodium, um, you should be able to prevent the next one. And depending on, and some other recommendations, depending on exactly what type it is. Um, Bas Dado asks, to test if coffee causes dry eyes, researchers apparently, research apparently shows that caffeine capsules actually help with tear production, but coffee contains more than just caffeine. Um, I didn't realize coffee causes dry eyes. That's not one of the, um, I, I'm not doubting it. I, it's possible I just never come across that literature. Um, so uh, yeah, no, I'd have to, I'd have to look. I mean, there's certainly hydrate. I do have some videos on uh, uh, dry eye syndrome. Um, and basically it's mostly about hydration and coffee would seem to be a good way to hydrate, but I'm just not familiar with the dry eye coffee literature. Um, Tanya asks, are there any food slash spice restrictions for gut inflammation? Um, uh, no helio, no HP bacteria, uh, presumably Helobacter pylori and diet is mostly plant-based. Um, doctors said no tomatoes, chocolate or coffee wonder what your doctor's thinking there. Um, and so the, the answer is treat the cause as always. So what is the gut inflammation being caused by? So there's lots of different types of gut inflammation. Um, there's actually inflammatory bowel diseases like Crohn's and, um, I, and inflammatory bowel disease. Um, and then there's other um, uh, kind of uh, chronic colitis, um, and so the answer, you just got to, I mean, ideally you'd find out what's causing it. Um, and I don't know of any condition for which tomatoes, coffee, and chocolate, um, those, those sound like things that you'd get, like give you heartburn. Sometimes tomatoes can do that for people. Uh, certainly uh, coffee can do it for people. I'm not, uh, so what I would do is I would ask your physician, why? Like, what is it about, what do you think I have? First of all, that's the most important question. Um, because then you can look it up. Uh, maybe I have videos about whatever type of inflammation you have. Um, and then ask, could you show me, could you share with me the data of why I'm avoiding tomatoes, chocolate, and coffee would help me? I mean, and ideally your doctor should be overjoyed that they have such a patient interested in their health. Um, too many patients seem to be less interested than optimal. Um, and look, the doctor wasn't born with this information. They learned it somewhere. So they should just share with you that information so you can um, make your own mind up. Um, unfortunately, too many physicians learn about nutrition and diet the same way that many people do. In the you know, supermarket checkout line, you, uh, looking at trashy magazines, um, 
unfortunately, um, rather than any formal uh, training in nutrition. And much of that formal new training is, you know, paid for by, you know, Coca-Cola. So you really just got to get to the science, which is why I started nutritionfacts.org. Okay. Where are we? Um, um, oh, this is Bastardo again saying, had dry and eyes from sun exposure. Um, oh, maybe I had an infection. Drink lots of water. Uh, could it be the dehydrating effects of coffee or tea? Well, tea is actually not, coffee and tea is not dehydrating. So there's no net water loss. Um, and so I actually have a, I think I have a video, uh, something about tea and dehydration actually goes through. Like there are some alcohol beverages, for example, where you do actually lose more water than you take in, can be de actively dehydrating, but coffee and tea are not two of them. Even though caffeine um, does have a diuretic effect, um, but not enough to balance all the water in coffee and tea. Um, my realtor Audrey asks if we dramatically, if we drastically up our blueberry and purple carrot consumption, I've never heard this question before. I like where it's going. Is it possible to stop taking um, glaucoma prevention medications? Um, uh, does blueberry, do blueberries and purple carrots help with glaucoma? Um, I don't remember, uh, I don't remember coming out. I'm trying to think what, what my glaucoma, I do have videos on glaucoma. I checked them out. I don't think there's a berry connection. Um, the berry connection is more with the, um, uh, macular degeneration, which is a different kind of eye disease We're dealing with a retina, a kind of layer in the back of your eye rather than, uh, rather than glaucoma. Um, uh, which deals more with kind of the pressure inside your eyeball. Um, so not that I know of, um, but if there's research that you know that I don't, please let me know. And if blueberries and purple carrots help people, I'll do a video about it. Olivier asks, um, uh, oh, uh, da, da, da. Uh, 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 saying that apologizing for messages, uh, would I take 20 seconds to read your hypothesis? Sure. Send it my way. Okay. Um, GRCVGC asks, what foods lowers blood pressure fastest? Um, so uh, it's a combination of avoiding foods that raise your cholesterol, like um, sodium-rich foods, um, and I talk about uh, the power of ground flax seeds and hibiscus tea to lower your cholesterol, um, although nitrate-rich vegetables will also help. So we're talking about arugula, all dark green leafies, and as well as beets, beet greens, and beet juice would probably be the top choices. Okay, here it looks like is Olivier's hypothesis. Microbiome is key. I agree with that so far. Um, and so, um, maybe plaque on our teeth is good. Um, the, the, so saying, you know, why paleolithic people don't have cavities, paleolithic people don't have cavities because they didn't have these, they weren't eating all this added sugar, which is what fosters the growth of bacteria that eat your teeth. Um, and so... Um, so continue to brush your teeth. That would be my suggestion. Well, more importantly, treat the cause and cut down your consumption of added sugars. All right. FVC, FVCK, your comfort zone at exclamation point asks, do I know of a uh, Kangen water? What's my take on it? I think, believe that's the, uh, the, the, um, uh, I, have, I have a video about that. If I'm correct, it's the, that's the, what do they call it? Um, what would you even, uh, here, let me do a quick search um, on Nutrition Facts uh, to see, oh, that, that would be an old video. I did that a long time ago. Let me see if that pops up. Boy, I've done a lot of videos that have to do with water. Um Wow, I'm on my 13th page of videos. I still don't see it. But um, 
Let me let me look for that uh, particular brand. Um, yeah, no, yeah, but, but basically, I did a video on alkaline water. I think that's what this is talking about. There's a machine that you can make alkaline water. I'm, I'm not surprised you could buy the water itself. Um, and basically, um, uh, I think the 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 video says basically these are all just a scam. Um, though there were benefits, I think, to a certain amount of baking soda added to water, if I remember correctly. I would check out, or I just type in alkaline or alkaline water into nutrition facts, and the video should pop right up. Okay, uh, Imuna asks, um, oh, a healthy environment, friends, family, love, affection, loving, kindness, compassion, doing good for those, volunteering, living a truthful life, a really full life. Oh, a really full life or healthy eating, which would be better for the body. I think the question is, is it better to be happy or to eat healthy? And the nice thing is, is there, it's a false dichotomy. We can have the best of both worlds. In fact, eating healthier will make us feel happier as well. Um, so I have videos talking about the improvement of mood, not just uh, in kind of a mood disorder, um, uh, uh, standpoint but in terms of just positive moods throughout the day um you can correlate how many like fruit and vegetable consumption with how how well you feel the next day um there's actually interventional trials where you can improve mood um by uh switching people to plant-based diets so you can have the best of both worlds a uh, full happy life and healthful eating you don't have to choose though if you did have to choose, that's really what the question is. I don't want to avoid the question. If you really did have to choose, then um, I think healthy eating would trump it. And, and the reason I say that is, you know, if you look at studies, um, uh, like if you look at what happened during World War II in Nazi-occupied Europe. So Nazi-occupied Europe, uh, basically the Nazis took all the cattle, took all the livestock, and people were, you know, digging for turnips in their backyard gardens. Um, and so all of a sudden, inadvertently, started eating a lot more plant-based. Um, uh, 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 what happened to their disease rates? Now, if you think, well, stress is the most important thing. It's not really diet. It's stress or some of these things you talked about, um, you know, having a nice, um, happy, healthy life. Um, if that's what what would matter, then Nazi occupied Europe, I mean, that's disease rates would skyrocket. But if diet was what mattered and trumped stress completely, um, uh, the disease rates would plummet. And that's indeed what happened, right? So deaths from heart disease, diabetes plummeted in the Nazi occupied Europe, uh, which just goes through, you can't think of, imagine a more stressful time than living under the Nazis. So um, absolutely diet, um, diet and lifestyle more important. I'm not saying the stress uh, uh, having a lot of stress in life is good. I'm just saying that if you eat healthy enough, um, that's uh, what makes most difference in terms of our health. All right, xylitol. So best out of West xylitol is uh, is a uh, laxative in high amounts, not even that high. So something like sorbitol, even like um, five grams a day can cause symptoms. Ten grams a day causes symptoms in the majority. Of, I think the Forget why. I think five grams a day causes um, uh, abdominal discomfort, bloating, gas in the majority of patients. And then 10 grams a day causes actually cramping and diarrhea. Um, and so that's not a lot. And so you could get that. I forget how many. I think every stick of gum, like a stick of uh, sugar-free gum, a sort of sweet and sugar-free gum, I think it has like a, like 0.7 grams sorbitol. I'm sure it's, it, it's different for each one. But I mean, so you could easily um, get, you know, diarrhea eating a whole pack of gum. Um, anyway, so yeah, so I'd be worried about, I'd be cautious about that. Um, and then, uh, well, why? Um, but the question is, so if you just have a little bit, what's the problem? Um, oh, well, I mean, if you have a little bit, um, there's not a problem with osmotic diarrhea, um, but um, I don't know. I mean, so uh, the, the, the question specifically why is xylitol not a green light food? Because well, a green light food, by definition, is an unprocessed uh, plant food, meaning no, nothing bad added, nothing good taken away. Xylitol has everything taken away except xylitol. I think they get it. I forget what they make it out of. I think sugar cane. Um, but 
Yeah, no, it's not a whole plant food at all and offers very little um, in terms of nutrition. By definition, because it's not even absorbed into the body. That's why it causes diarrhea. All right, Shabbos Dada, what about uh, acupuncture? Um, uh, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's one of my, I have a whole um, uh, folder filled with non-nutrition um, related topics. And that's where I have vac vaccinations and um, uh, uh, that's where I had mammograms and that's where I had um, cell phones and acupuncture. There's a whole big folder on all the most important papers ever published on acupuncture. Um, and I do hope one day to get back to that um, because, you know, anytime, I don't know, you know just, just to find out what the science is, I'm as interested as anybody. Um, and, uh, and so sometimes I delve into non-nutrition topics. Anytime there's kind of like a controversy or anytime there's, uh, there's vested interest on either side trying to skew the science. But, um, I, but I, I've tried to, uh, I don't know, those are kind of low priority um, su subjects for me just because there's so much nutrition information out there. So ideally what you should start is uh, medicine facts or lifestyle facts or exercise facts or science facts .org or whatever and do your own research in acupuncture, put up your own videos and I'll watch your videos. Um, there needs to be 10 more nutrition facts sites just that on the nutrition stuff. Um, but maybe I'll get around to it one day. I certainly do have all the science. It's something that I, I've collected the research on. I just haven't had time to read it and analyze it. All right. GRC VGCS, what are the best foods or supplements for insomnia? Um, I do have, uh, if you type in sleep and nutrition facts, there are a few videos will pop up. Um, I talk about, uh, for example, um, tart cherries, kiwi fruits, I forget. You'd have to go look through the list. I do have a video coming up about um, uh, the use of melatonin, something I caution against in supplement form. There's actually a food that uh, basically is, uh, is is way, is more potent in terms of melatonin than any other food even comes close. And that's actually pistachio nuts. I forget. I think it's like two pest pistachio nuts have as much melatonin uh, it gave you as much melatonin in your bloodstream as your physiological does, as your brain does um, every night. Um, and a whole, and so, and a handful would give you like one of these potent, uh, you know, unphysiological supplement forms. Um, but I have a whole bunch of videos on chronobiology, on circadian rhythm uh, medicine, and on treating jet lag and all sorts of things. So you may be interested in all that. Unfortunately, my time is up. Um, and uh, I'm sorry I didn't get to, to everyone else's questions, but next month we'll do this again. Hopefully get to your questions. I just go from the top on down. So the earlier you get on the call, the more chance I'll get to your question. The next uh, Q&A day is July 26th for both Facebook and YouTube. I will see everybody then. Until then, I am back to the book, back to writing the book.